but I was born and bred in Penang. I'm uh, trained to be a, a lawyer uh, for my first uh, professional uh, degree. Uh, I studied law in the UK and then I, I didn't want to practice law for some reason, so I ended up uh, pursuing a master's degree in Japan uh, in international economics. So after I completed my, day, my master's, I came back to uh, Malaysia. I was looking for a job. I became a, a corporate banker. I used to work for uh, City Bank in the corporate and investment banking uh, divisions. So I handle a lot of corporate clients. Uh, you know, I do a lot of high finance and things like that. You know, it was a uh, well very exciting number of years. I I was with the corporate world, uh, steadily climbing the corporate ladders and so on. And came one Friday, I decided that uh, you know there's a calling. It's a calling from the family that uh, you know um, for me to to join because my family is in business uh, all the while, right? We've been in, I think my father started the business long ago, uh, back in the 80s and so on. So, so I thought, you know, maybe I have a responsibility to also help him, uh, you know, in running the business. So I quit uh, banking, corporate banking, eventually when I was doing very well, and uh, decided to take on the entrepreneurial journey, and that's how I got started. Uh, from there on, you know, I, I do a lot of things uh, from different different parts of the business and so on. I also experimented a lot. And one of the ventures that I, I was involved with is in the, uh, you know, this nucleus project, which is the one that's, uh, you know, the subject of uh, discussion for the day. Now, firstly, we are in the clothing industry. But in the clothing industry and uh, you know uh, both upstream as well as downstream and uh, we wanted to start a brand you know we wanted to start a brand uh, we want to do something different but if you look at the market at that time i think we started nucleus almost uh, i think it must be more than eight nine years ago or maybe a little bit more than that so you know there were so many brands in the market so we we're thinking there's really no point for us to introduce another brand right if we don't cater to to any special purpose as such so for us to exist there must be a reason and that's why we started to do some research and we realized that actually the whole uh, fashion industry itself is actually uh, you know there's a big environmental issues related to the fashion industry itself and we felt that this is something that uh, maybe we should come in to fill that, that uh, the gap in the market to offer something that's environmentally friendly right mm -hmm. so so we, that's how we got started and we were thinking to, to give a you know a facelift to the brand and we were trying to co-brand with uh, an organizations you know that would give a boost to the, the brand itself so at that time we approached a number of uh, NGOs one of them is the WWF Worldwide Fund for Nature right the Panda logo and all this so we talked to them and we explored the possibility of partnership and so on and we were lucky because uh, they were open to the idea um, so we formulated, formalized a partnership relationship. W became our co-brand partner and they taught us a lot of things, including how to really build a sustainable brand. We started with traditional way of uh, selling, right, to the traditional distribution channels. When we started off, uh, uh, our main distribution channels would be the physical channels. Right, physical outlets, the department stores, the organic shops, the health related shops and so on. That is our main channel of distributions, both locally as well as we have some uh, retailers in overseas and distributors in overseas as well. And online, in fact, was only a small portion of the business for us. Right? Why we started online at that time, we didn't even think about uh, online as a way to, to increase sales. We, we think about online having a website, you know, having an e-commerce store is more, more like look good that kind of thing to us at that point in time uh, we just have we just wanted something want to have something for branding purposes you know and also it's good to maybe to add another layer of uh, you know any additional uh, channel or distributions and so on so to be frank with you we didn't pay too much attention uh, but as it evolves uh, we started to see more and more potential uh, with regards to the online uh, business itself and then we started to explore not just on our website and also on the marketplaces and so on we don't really have much expectation except for the fact that we just want to have a store that looks good it's more 
as a you know for for the purpose of branding, right? Mm-hmm. Or for purpose of branding, also for, for the purpose of portraying something, you know, information that was of we use that to to educate the consumers. We use that also to attract uh, retailers and international distributors to to join force with us to promote the brand. So, as I told you just now, you know, we didn't really think about e-commerce as a viable means of generating income uh, for the company right, at that time. But as we go, you know, as we progress and all that, uh, things started to to look more and more promising, and we started to pay more attention and give more focus and, and effort into growing the online business over time. The main marketplace for us now, it, there are two places. Number one is the uh, Zalora because we are actually a um, fashion brand, all right? Uh, we are a fashion brand and so we started with Zalora and uh, not just in Malaysia, but uh, we also grew with uh, Zalora in Singapore, in Hong Kong, as well as in Taiwan, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we're seeing steady uh, business coming in from Zalora locally as well as internationally. It's a good platform for us to gain, uh, you know, to generate revenues also uh, for the brand exposure and so on. So Zalora is one main platform for us, like this one. Um, locally, there is a, we still we also have some business with Shopee. A little bit of Lazada, we didn't really go much with that because I think being a fashion brand, we want our brand to, you know, we want to position ourselves uh, in a more, uh, how do I call it? We want to position ourselves correctly. We don't want it to go into, you know, uh, we don't want to work with a platform that we consider may not be so suitable for the brand. So therefore we choose to be fashion focused and Galora is one of them, right? Now, the other platform that we ventured last year was uh, we, we actually list our brand in uh, uh, actually in Amazon, Amazon in the US, as well as in, in Canada and uh, Australia. In fact, uh, through our resellers, uh, international online distributors, we have started to list on Amazon for some years ago. Right. But that was through a third party uh, resellers and they were doing well. And, uh, you know, last year we decided that, uh, you know, we should also uh, do it ourselves because we want to learn how this business is being done. So, you know, we started with Amazon FBA. Are you aware of that? The, uh, you know, fulfillment by Amazon where we actually ship our goods to, to the US and then, uh, you know, we sell to the Amazon customers and so on. So we started that initiative also last year. So th- those are the two uh, major major ones. Uh. We may do Shopify, may do other platforms in the future. Uh, those are in the pipeline. Well, it depends on how do you how do you want to look at it. Right? If it's for if we ship from fulfill from Malaysia, usually uh, you know it takes depending on the destination as well. You know, and it, we ship actually to many many countries in the world, I think, uh, in the US, in the UK, Australia, Hong Kong, you know, name it, uh, many countries. So most of them, they are able to accept that, you know, because of postage is an issue and all this, right? right? Of course, you want to be fast. You can always try a uh, courier service, you know, with the likes of FedEx and so on, but it's very expensive. And the items that we carry, those are not high value, you know, not high value items. So sometimes if you ship, you know, the, the shipping cost would uh, be even more expensive compared to the merchandise itself. Right, so most of our customers are able to accept a registered air parcel from us, all right? And that seems to be something that's quite accepted because we will tell them upfront how many days it will take, how much it will cost, and so on. And we, we don't seem to have major problem in that regards. To set up a store, you know, to set up the listing and all these things, uh, uh, you know, whether you do it in your own stores or this, or, or whatever it is, uh, it's it's really not difficult, right? It's not difficult to do good images, to do good write-up, to have a you know and compelling value propositions to put that up is is not a a difficult task to do. Something that we can always control. If not, that we can outsource to good people to do. Right? The most challenging part is is really to do with traffic, right? As you as you would uh, probably agree also. How do you get the traffic to come to your store? I think that is the most challenging part of it. And traffic is becoming uh, more and more expensive. Right? That's how people you know, investing in the social media side, people invest in uh, Facebook, Google, you know, that kind of thing to generate traffic to your store. Uh, the technique of doing it is one thing and also the investment 
that you have to put in uh, you know it's that to me is the main challenge uh, in terms of running an e-commerce store that's why as far as our, how do we overcome that that challenge uh, it's I think for a starter you know for people who are beginning and all this I would think that uh, well, unless you're very good in social media you know how to drive traffic and so on and you have some money to invest in uh, you know paid advertising and so on otherwise I think it's good to start with marketplaces right marketplaces and I think I think Malaysia you know we all know what are the main marketplaces depending on product lines and so on but if you do a good listing you have a good offer and things like that it has to be good right to start with you have to sell good products you have to sell something that offer something unique to consumers you know so that uh, you can attract them to buy but I would suggest for, for people who are starting out maybe they should they can consider marketplaces right from there you get the traffic to come in and then you can collect the database from the tra- from the you know the marketplaces when you start to do the fulfillment you get their you know their details and so on and over time you build a database then maybe you can make use of that database to generate uh, you know to to sell cross sell you know to you know to create uh, how do I say it? to to offer more products and and so on. that becomes your you know your loyal customers and you can build a business uh, from there but that requires time and so on and patience to do that. Uh, this is really an opportunity uh, for people who want to start up, you know. Um, but what I would say is uh, many people want to sell something. Uh, everybody will say, oh, nice, good, uh, let, let's try it. But I, I would encourage people to think uh, slightly differently. Right? The, the market really doesn't require more products. You know, there are really enough products in the market. But what the market, what the market wants is uh, better solutions. Right, better solutions, better products, and things like that. So, if you want to go to the marketplace, you want to start an online business. It's just like any traditional business. It's just that the means of selling is is different and so on. But the thinking behind it, you, you know, you always want to have uh, good products. You know, products that cater to different needs. It must be demand, and you do better than what the competitors are doing. And once you figure out all those things, then use the online platform. Right, use the online platform to. To do the penetrations, I would suggest and I recommend people to consider marketplaces like what I've told you before. I right? collect the data and then build their own, maybe drive the data to your e-commerce store later on. And once you have the business, you can also start to invest more into paid traffic, you know, influencer marketing, uh, social media marketing, and so on and so forth to really further scale your business uh, to the next to the next level. I, I think, but it all starts from good product. You know, product that meets uh, the market demand, product that offers better solution to you know uh, to the consumers and so on. Without which, I think you're just another product, you're just another brand. You know, um, you're gonna compete with pricing and so on, and that's not something that we want to do, right? In the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't see this uh, as an opportunity to. To promote anything right but for me uh, I just feel that um, we're in the business of uh, uh, talking about our brand new place uh, we actually a brand new nations right the brand exists with a purpose to engage consumers to do something good for themselves and also for uh, you know the people and the environment through the res- the idea of responsible consumptions right when we spend our dollar we actually vote for a better future you know a better now and a better future we actually vote to help people we actually vote to help the environment you know, this whole idea of responsible consumption that is at the heart of the brand itself and that's something that is fundamental to the values of the brand so i don't want to you know promote anything that's not never in the agenda right but what i want to do is i want to encourage um <clears throat> aspiring entrepreneurs to embrace that concept right and as i said you know when we do something the market really doesn't require another brand another product but the market requires something that's different that offers a better solution you know make your brand a responsible brand try to jump in and support responsible consumptions all right offer the market a unique a better solutions that not only would help the consumers right you have to help the consumers address their pain points and so on and so forth but we have to go beyond that as well right? making money and at the same time contributing to a better society, a better future, you know, responsible consumptions, empowering ourselves and empowering the consumers to do something really good for them and for themselves.
So my agenda is to promote the idea of responsible consumptions for any of those uh, you know aspiring entrepreneurs who may want to jump into the, you know the business world and taking full advantage of the online platform, the technologies and you know the the AI that's available, all this kind of uh, stuff that's happening. You know, uh, you can really create an impact uh, for yourself, right? And also uh, for the society. This is the time to do it.